I want to welcome back our viewers to Conversations with John. This is a video series that we run where we have conversations with uh, leaders across the life of the United Church of Christ. Couldn't be happier to have our guest on with us today, Marsha Williams, who is an Associate Conference Minister for the New York Conference of the United Church of Christ. Um, welcome, Marsha. Glad to have you here. Thank you, John. It's glad to, uh, to be here and to be able to have some conversation today. Yeah, why don't you say a word to our viewers about who you are and introduce yourself to them uh, for those who may not know you. Right. Well, my name is Reverend Dr. Marsha Williams, and I am an Associate Conference Minister for Authorized Ministry Concerns in the New York Conference. Um, I'm going into my sixth year, time sure flies, um, of hard to believe. doing this work. Yeah, it's hard to believe that's been that long. Um, my, my portfolio, in addition to search and call across the state of New York, is um, all things clergy, all things authorized ministry. So I deal with uh, taking care of our pastors and making sure you know, continuing education, fitness reviews, working with committees on ministry. Those are the, the things that are in my program portfolio. And I love my job. I love what I do. I love the people that I work with. Um, we have a great team here in New York with uh, Reverend David Gajewski as our conference minister. And um, I, I, I love my work. This is, this is what what God called me to do. I love hearing that. Um, I had the joy of serving on a committee on ministry for 23 years, if you can imagine. I was wow. a committee member, then a committee chair, uh, then 12 years in conference ministry. Um, and like you, I absolutely loved it. It was one of those opportunities where you get to see the church at its best and sometimes at its worst. worst. Yeah. But there was never an unimportant or dull meeting. Uh, regarding the work of the, the church at the authorization level and the committee on ministry level. Absolutely. So you have care of clergy. Let's, let's start right there. How are your clergy doing? Well, all things considered, you know, with, with what's going on here in New York, I think uh, for the most part, the clergy are doing as well as can be expected. Um, and it, actually, it depends on where you are in New okay. York as to you know, the magnitude of the, the impact of, of the uh, COVID virus, the, the the downstate New York City, um, Long Island, Buffalo, Albany, the larger city places, is where we're really where we're really seeing struggle, um, and then you know, more the the region, uh, rural places are not not quite as uh, as uh, impacted by this, but but yet the isolation and the amount of grief that we're we're picking up from our clergy is is relevant and one of the things we're really trying to do is to help stay connected and help them stay connected to one another uh, for support and we're having opportunities where we gather uh, with the clergy conference-wide by association when just to keep them talking um, because we're finding that there's a lot of loneliness and there is a lot of grief among our clergy and, and it's certainly understandable with, with you know, their, the call in their life is to minister to their people. That's a, that's a physical connection piece that's not happening. And um, we're seeing church, churches with some churches have members who have the virus and everybody knows somebody or is related to somebody who's had it or passed away from it. And we've got pastors who are, you know, struggling to be able to minister to those folks and then taking on, tasks and responsibilities that they maybe have never had to do before with trying to design and understand online worship and then being able to stay connected to their members without being able to physically be present with them. So we've got, we're, we're learning to be techie, um, even though some folks are, are afraid of it, but we, we're hearing from pastors that uh, some like it and some can't wait till it's over. <laughs> It is an interesting challenge, um, and I've noted with uh, other leaders in some of our conversations that changes that the church had been resisting for quite some time, whether they wanted to or not, they had to adapt literally yes, overnight. Overnight. Um, what are some of the successes that you're seeing, and what are some of the deep concerns that you have relative to these overnight adjustments? Mm -hmm. Um, a couple of things that, that we that we are seeing is that again, churches our churches are very resilient, mm -hmm. um, and and some of the ones like you said who were you know, reluctant are kind of being drug into this this technology thing, and they're finding that it's not as hard as they maybe thought it was, and that they are the the ability to reach people that they may not have had access to, 
you know, people from other countries even have zoomed into various worship services and they would, you know, this churches would never have had, had access to those folks. So I think there's a lot of surprise there. One of the real highlights is we've got a couple of churches that are, are learning how to fellowship virtually. Uh, one so church has like, worship. oh yeah, yeah, we've got like a lunch with the pastor. <laughs> and you know, you get your bologna sandwich and peanut butter and jelly, and you all gather around Zoom. We've got a, a churches that are having a fun night, and they're playing games by by way of a, a virtual, you know, um, trivia games and scavenger hunts and things like that that they're doing uh, virtually. We've we've seen a um, our folk come together around the children, where some of the the churches have. Uh, children's time where they're offering it to children across the whole state, which is really something that's impacting our parents who are trying to work at home and have the little ones running around. At least maybe you got an hour or so where somebody's going to read them a story, do a craft with them online from one of our churches. And that gives you a little bit of a break. Right. So those are some of the great things that we're seeing our, our churches do. Um, where some of our challenges may be coming in is that we've got a lot of our smaller churches and rural churches not having the, the internet bandwidth yeah. to be able to, um, to do any type of streaming. And so we're trying to work with them to do maybe conference, call, conference calls where they can at least stay connected. And because we have older members, they don't have uh, you know, internet capacity or they're, they're really, really afraid of it, reluctant yeah. to, to, to dip into it. And so that, that creates some challenges of keeping those folks connected to um to their their beloved church members their pastor their friends family and so forth so those are the kinds of the challenge some of the challenges that we're seeing so one of the things i'm curious about and i'm sure many of our listeners are and certainly in many of the ecumenical circles that i travel this has become a a, a, a live question now and it's about the virtual worship what are your churches doing? Because by now all of them will have had an opportunity to have, were they in the sanctuary, done one of the sacraments by now. What are your churches doing in terms of offering sacramental worship, not just Sunday worship, virtually? Are, are, you, are you seeing some of that unfold? And, oh, yeah. and what are you seeing and what's the conversation like? Well, what we've tried to do um, as far as the staff is to resource our churches with ideas of how these various things could be done. And so very early on, we, um, we sort of uh, scavengered around at what different churches were doing, even outside of our denomination, as it related to um, the sacraments. And we put together a little short video of different ways that we had seen people do the sacraments. So, you know, one lady was in her kitchen and she sang a song and then she had her bread and her, her wine there and was sharing that with folks on TV or on the screen. Another minister just had, you know, his PowerPoint up and that had a picture of a chalice, but he had notified his people the week before to have their, their elements there on the table. We've seen some, some, some people, folks who have, have set their own table, some, some elaborate, some very simple, um, and sent in pictures of their, their, their communion table. And um, we've seen the little individual communion cup thing. So the whole gamut, but letting folks know there's more than one way to do this. And then folks coming up with ways to do it, whether it's, you know, you got your, your, your grape juice or your wine and your wafer, or if it's coffee and a cinnamon roll, but we're going to, we're going to have our meal together and, and, and be blessed and the presence of God is with us, all of us, as we, we commune together. So those are the kinds of things that we, we've been trying to do, and I think we're doing pretty good at it. One of the things that I've enjoyed about this conversation from a United Church of Christ perspective is every time I talk with somebody about it, it's only a question of how are we going to do it. It's really not a question of can we or should we do it. And yet with a number of our ecumenical partners, that is the question. Is this really communion if it's done virtually? Um, and this is not an opportunity to talk about how much better we are. But I do want to say that one of the things that I enjoy about life in this United Church of Christ is um, we don't have to have that debate. Right. If it works for you and it's authentic for you, then you're going to do it. Yeah. And and again, I, don't, I, just I think we, how. we don't need to be... I think we, 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 we do ourselves a disservice when we try to place God's grace in a box. Yes. 
whether in, in it, uh, whether it's well a, a building box, yep, or or a a, a, a virtual computer box. screen box. Yeah. Um, I I have one of my things I've always said is that God is so much bigger than what we we allow God to be, and and I think some of these these things that we're getting out of our ritualistic box, and and being able to to stretch ourselves and maybe even stretch our faith and stretch our theology, to to be able to see that that the, the the elements and the, the, the communion, it's really about God's grace. It's not about where you are. It's not even about what you, what you eat. But it's about the grace of God that's imparted to all of us in the process of, of take, having that meal together. Yeah. Well said. Yeah. So um, I, I'm curious. We're worshiping virtually, but your primary area of responsibility is authorization of clergy. Uh, are you seeing any um, ecclesiastical work through your committee being done virtually? Yeah. And if so, what does that look like? We have um, this past, maybe it's pa this past week, week and, or two weekends ago, we did our first ecclesiastical council virtually. Okay. And um, from all the feedback we got from the folks, it was a huge success. And they had more people attending than they would have had had they had it in person. Okay, now, before you continue with this, for any on the call who may not be the ecclesiastical geeks and nerds right. that you and I are, an ecclesiastical council is? It is an opportunity for an association who authorizes a minister to interview that that. that candidate, ministerial candidate, to um, talk to them about their theology, their, their mission, their vision for ministry, and to determine if they will indeed authorize that individual when the association then votes on that. And just to be clear, this comes at the end of years of Some, preparation. Yes. It, it comes at a moment when one who is convinced that they have been called by the Holy indeed. Spirit and done now years of preparation must stand before the final body Yes. To, to know whether or not all of that was time well spent and whether or not they can pursue that call now. Right. Right. And it was a, it work. was a great time to, to have done, done that, you know, in that setting. We, it took some, it took some maneuvering, you know, and working with the zoom and, and the breakout rooms and, and all that. And even being able to take the actual uh, association vote virtually, right. but it, but it, it, it went off without a hitch. It was great. So I think I that may be something that we hang on to even beyond uh, this COVID time. Well, to hear you say you had more people participate than you would otherwise. And of course, if it's outstate New York or upstate New York, the, the time it takes to travel from one place to another. Indeed. Is, is, was, all right. And the cost. Yeah. And the cost. Yeah. So um, last question. And it, Maybe an unfair one because I'm going to force you to tell a story on the spot. Okay. <laughs> but, but what have you seen or experienced that brings you joy or hope in the midst of this season? I think that that would be um, this past week, we, we had a, a Zoom meeting with all of our clergy of color. Okay. recognizing that um, this virus has disproportionately impacted communities of color. And so we thought it was necessary that let's bring together our, our pastors of color to see how they're doing and, and what some of their needs are. What, what, um, what moved me, I think, most was, first of all, the pastors were so grateful that we gave them an opportunity and provided that space for them to connect with one another, again, across the entire, entire state. Um, and I was really pleased to listen to them as they were very vulnerable about some of the things that they're, they're dealing with and some of the pain that, that they're experiencing. And, you know, we know for a fact that with, in particularly the African American community, mental health issues is somewhat of a stigma. And as hard as we try, we, we, we try to move around that. But to have these ministers of color come together and really talk about how some of the grief that they're experiencing, the loneliness that they're dealing with, and being able to have a place to share that together, that was really moving. And the, I think for me where the hope part came was that we asked them, was this helpful? 
would you like to continue this? And it was unanimous of everyone that was on the screen that they wanted to continue having these opportunities to come together and to share. And then they talked about ways in which they might be able to help one another. Small churches who don't necessarily have the online capability, a larger pastor saying, well, why don't you all join in with us on worship on such and such a Sunday? And pastor, you can do the, the read the scripture and you, you know, and I'll, do the prayer and we'll share in the worship leadership watching that unfold right there on the on this computer screen that, that gave me some hope for for the future of of the new york conference regardless of how this this turns out we are still one big family out here that's beautiful yeah. and you know i you are truly a gifted leader and i i hope people understand and in hearing this story might help them that going into ministry in the wider church doesn't mean you abandon your pastoral instinct. Oh. And, and this was very much on your part and the part of the staff that you, you work with, a, a, a pastoral response. Um, so thank you for that. Well, I want to thank our viewers for tuning in once again to Conversations with John. I was delighted that Marcia was able to join us. And I'm sure now that you've had a chance to meet and listen to her, you are as well. Uh, Marcia, thank you for being here, and I give you the last word. I just want to say thank you, John, for the opportunity um, and ask all of our partners across this denomination to please continue to keep New York in your prayers as we, uh, as we all battle this virus, but certainly um, it has hit us in a way that we never would have anticipated, and your prayers and your thoughts are, are always appreciated, and thank you again, John. I appreciate the time. You're welcome, and thank you to our viewers. Remember to keep New York and their churches and their families in your thoughts and prayers. This has been Conversations with John. Until next time, thank you. <laughs>